what does it mean that Jesus is God's only begotten son? What does it mean? The phrase only begotten son occurs in uh, uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Begotten. Now, <clears throat> uh, the phrase only begotten is a translated uh, Greek word. Um, it's basically translated from this Greek word which uh, says mono, monogenes. Okay? Monogenes. This word is uh, variously translated into English as only. Okay? One and only and uh, only begotten. Um, in this last phrase, which is uh, about the only begotten, this is used uh, much in King James and uh, NASB, NASB version and also New King James, that uh, it causes a lot of problems. You see, false teachers have latched onto this phrase to try to prove their false teaching that Jesus Christ isn't equal to God the Father. That uh, Jesus isn't equal in essence to God as the second person of the Trinity. They see the word begotten and say that Jesus is a created being because only someone who has a beginning in time can be begotten. What this fails to note is that begotten is an English translation of a Greek word. As such, we have to look at the original meaning of the Greek word not to transfer English meanings into the text. So, what does the word monogenes mean? It has two primary, uh, primary definitions uh, pertaining to being the only one of his kind within a specific relationship and pertaining to one, to being the only one of his kind of or class. Unique in kind, thus monogenes may be used both as an adjective, monogenes space, meaning the unique and special. So, basically meaning Jesus is the only one of the kind of God. Is the only one of God's kind. That, that special trinity, that kind of power, is the only one who has that kind of relationship with God. Is the only one of the same class. It's not about, let's come here and check, huh? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, let's come here and check uh, uh, Bible definitions here and you can see. What does it say? Uh, begotten son is here. Begotten. Only begotten. Monogenes. Okay. Now, when we look at this, let's check uh, the words here. Monogenes. Let's see. Let's see the biblical usage. How does the Bible use this word? Of single of his kind you see the kind if you have uh, you have uh, let's say some animals let's say we have uh, for example some sheep a sheep is not a goat because a sheep and a goat they are not of the same kind okay but you can adopt a sheep to be in the family of uh, goats and uh, you know and they are all raised together like the way you can say for example uh, uh, I, I don't know how to explain, but you, you, can, you can get the point. It's of its kind only. Are you seeing the point? So Jesus, being the only begotten son, it means is, is of the kind of God. Is of his type. Okay? This is uh, also the same meaning uh, which is depicted in Hebrews 11.17. Let me show you here. Hebrews 11. Uh, 17 Hebrews 11 17 it says by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and his uh, he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son now why is Abraham talking about his only begotten son Isaac because Isaac he was the only son that uh, because Abraham had more than one son. Let, let me just uh, get much more clear. Uh, Abraham had more than one son. But Isaac was the only son that he had by Sarah and the only son of the covenant. 
Are you seeing the point? Therefore, it is the uniqueness of Isaac among the other sons that allows for the use of the word monogenes or only begotten in that context. Have you seen that? Have you been able to understand? Now, the second definition is pertaining to being the only one of his, of his kind or class. Okay? Of his kind or class. Hmm? Unique in kind. Just the same way Isaac was unique to Abraham. Very unique to him. Okay? This is the meaning that uh, is implied in John 3.16, what you've just read. And also if you check uh, John 1.14, it also speaks about the same. John uh, John 1.14, uh, it also speaks about the same thing. Look here. And the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word, who is Jesus, was made flesh. So he was unique in his own way. Even when he was in flesh, he was still unique as God. You see? That's why the Bible says he was only begotten of the Father. And of course you can check uh, verse 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is the bosom of his father, he has declared him. So he's still explaining more about Jesus being the only begotten, the only one unique of God. The only one of the kind of God. When we see also John 3.18, uh, John 3.18, it also speaks about the same thing. John 3.18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Meaning, he has not believed in the kind. Are, are you seeing that? In the unique one of God. He's not believed on the unique one of God. That's why you'll be condemned. And First John 4.9, 1 John 4, verses 9, it says something here also. It says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. So he sent his kind so that we might live through him. Are, are you seeing the point? Are you seeing exactly what the Bible is talking about? So John was primarily concerned with demonstrating that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. And he uses monogenes, that word which I've shown you, eh, to highlight Jesus as uniquely God's son. Go and read the John 20, 31. I don't have time to go and check that. Sharing the same divine nature as God as opposed to believers who are God's son and daughters by adoption. Do you know us? We are the children of God by adoption. We are adopted. Ephesians. We are children of God, yes. But uh, we are not like, uh, we are not the only begotten sons of God. And I saw this one, some uh, false prophet there called, uh, uh, false preacher called uh, who? Th th this lady, this lady, this uh, slender lady, she's called who? She's called who? She's called who? Uh, she was saying that uh, Jesus is not the only begotten son of God. And I was wondering, do you ever read the Bible? Do you really ever read the Bible? Do you ever read it? How can you say Jesus is not the only begotten son? Do you have the kind of Jesus? These are the people who want to make themselves to be God. And they say some weird things and you wonder, do people... See here, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, we are adopted by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You see, I don't want to continue reading here, but let me just read. To the praise of glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Now, we are accepted because we are adopted. We are adopted children of God. We are not begotten. We are adopted. And that's why Jesus is unique, because he's of the same kind with God. He is the son of God. He is the begotten son. We are adopted sons. Are you seeing the difference? Are you seeing the difference? 
It's really, really important to see that and to be able to understand. So the bottom line is that, is that uh, terms such as father and son, okay, these terms that we use, father, son, Holy Spirit, and uh, things like that, these are descriptive of God and Jesus. They are human terms that will help us to understand the relationship between the different persons of the Trinity. They will only help us to understand. If you can understand the relationship between a human father and a human son, then you can understand in part the relationship between the first and the second persons of the Trinity. So the analogy breaks down if you try to take it too far and to teach some uh, pseudo-Christian cults, such as the Jehovah's Witness, that uh, Jesus was literally begotten, as in he was produced or he was created by God the Father. That's, that's not true. Jesus was not created. He was not created. He is the son. He is of the same kind. He is of the same class or kind. Okay? He is of the same class or kind. So you have to understand this in depth. It's really, really important. Jesus is the only begotten son. He is of the only kind of God. He's the only one in the Trinity, okay? He's the only of God, you know, he's the one in, in this kind of God, okay? We others, we are adopted and we should be thankful. We are adopted and we should be thankful that we are adopted into the kingdom of God. Are you adopted? Are you a child of God? Are you adopted? The only way you can be adopted is through the gospel. Unless you believe the gospel, you can never become a child of God. How do you get to become a child of God by believing the gospel. What is the gospel? Gospel is good news. Good news about what? How that the kind of God, Jesus, him, he left his glory and he came and he died for you so that you can be saved. Because you are a sinner. While you are still sinners, Christ died for you. So that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you love everlasting life. All that you need to do is to understand how Jesus died and why he had to die. How did he die? By shedding his blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And why blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. If you remove the blood, then uh, some, something has died. Why does it have to die? The wages of sin is death. You sinned and hence you deserved to die. But Jesus, while you are still sinners, he died for you. So that if you believe that this death was for you, then you're saved. All you need to do is just to confess to God what you have understood. Tell him, Jesus, I have understood that you died and that you were buried and that you rose again the third day according to the, uh, how the scripture says. For me, and I receive this atonement with gladness and I believe you now. Please make me a new creature. Save me because it is only through you that I can be adopted to become a child of God. Thank you, Lord, and 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 bless me more and open up my mind if you if you just you know do that you understand the work of god is just to believe in his son that's what the bible says then you are saved hope this has been a blessing to you hope uh, you've been able to understand something please you can share the video you can uh, subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss a new video we post every day to edify the body of christ god bless you and have a blessed blessed time